The Crease Foundation's conservation research program has got four sections to it, and this is on mammals, on birds, on insects, and on forest regeneration. Within the bird section, we are currently focusing on our blue-headed macaw project, whilst in the mammal section, we are looking at both large and small mammals. The insect project um, currently focuses on butterflies, uh, whilst the forest regeneration is looking at both biomass and phenology within the forest. The Blue Headed Macaw project is possibly one of the longest ones that the, that the Crease Foundation has under its conservation research program. The methodology is designed in accordance with other research stations in the area. And this is very important because it allows for us to compare our data with other sites the name of the Blue-Headed Macaw project can be a little bit misleading because it doesn't just focus on the Blue-Headed Macaw, it focuses on all the other macaws that are in the region that are flying to and from the culpa, that are using the culpa on a daily basis, um, as well as parakeets and parrots. The Small Mammal Project is probably one of our most exciting and it's definitely one of the new projects that we've got running here. The Small mammals are very important for forest regeneration. They are seed predators, they distribute seeds, um, and also they act as prey for uh, larger species. In order to survey them, uh, we are using two methods. We're using pitfall trap method, and we're using um, tomahawk traps, uh, which are live traps uh, made out of wire, and they're placed in the forest in a grid formation. Now the reasoning why we use uh, two different methods is because different species are caught in different traps at different rates. A certain species simply do not uh, want to go into a tomahawk trap, while certain species do not fall into a pitfall trap. And so the idea is that we, we have a good inventory of the species present. Conservationists have for decades concentrated on protecting and researching uh, primary forests. Um, however, as industrial activities and agricultural activities move through primary forests, as degradation and destruction of primary forests happens and takes place, and as those activities move on, the value of secondary forests, not only for research and for our understanding of biodiversity within these forests, but also for conservation sake, protecting this biodiversity, secondary forests become more and more important. In fact, this is why the MLC is so interesting, because on the property uh, there was a mosaic of perhaps destructive activities, including agriculture, uh, planting of pasture, sugarcane, coffee, banana, and cocoa as well. And so now, as the forest has been recovering for 25 years, this becomes a very interesting place to study the impact of past disturbance on current biodiversity, on current forest processes, uh, and on forest structure as well. Our data is going to be analysed, or is being analysed, already by Glasgow University, by Oxford, uh, who will be also sending PhD students here in the future, but also um, by other researchers who also visit the MLC and use it for their own studies and who then publish their results widely. And we are hoping to distribute this knowledge um, to other research stations within the area and also to the international community. The Conservation Research Programme is working to develop um, awareness material, or ed education material uh, for the local community uh, and also for the local institute, which is the only real opportunity within, within the local area for a higher education. Our results directly feed into this material. And not only that, but we are also using the program to help local people uh, increase their knowledge and their capacity uh, to learn about the environment and actually to protect what is in effect theirs.